I'll tell you who the real Hazrat was. Like a full moon, Shihab Hazrat has risen. Towards enlightenment, he made a bold move. For his nation, the priceless gift Hazrat was. Shigabutin Marzani, he is called one of the fathers of the Tatar nation. He personifies the era of desperate and courageous efforts to release the national identity of the Tatar people and their living arrangement from the stifling fetters of medieval darkness. This is the period when the Tatars, gradually emerging from political and economic isolation, begin to become part of Russia, taking steps towards capitalism. But at the same time, the Tatars try to preserve their Islamic identity and to remain part of the Muslim world. Marzani embodied one of the examples of the integration of two worlds. Shigabutin Hazrat is a shrewd and bright theologian, but at the same time, he is a representative of academic science. Thus, by his own example, he outlined the vector of the movement of the Muslim personality, independence based on knowledge and enlightenment. Shigabutin Marzani was born in the village of Yabinchi of the present Aninsky district of the Republic of Tartastan on January 16, 1818. Marzani's real name given to him by his parents was Harun. He will be called Shigabutin, which means the rushing star, later for his zeal in comprehending religion. One of his ancestors, Gabdel Kodus, was the first settler and founder of the village of Marsan. A few years later, after Marzani's birth, his family moves to the nearby village of Tashkichu, the current Arski district. It is with this village that the spiritual leader of the nation and the great theologian associates his main memories of childhood and youth. Marzani's mother, Bibi Kubaiba, was very intelligent and devout woman. She was good at building relationships with people. She died at the age of 29. So at the age of five, Marzani lost the caress of his mother forever. Once I was playing with a kitten near the water. Then I was told my mother called me and brought home. She was sick when I approached her. She looked at me with eyes full of sadness. After that, she burst into tears and said, My son, that you will call mother, who will educate you and take care of you. After that, mom died. I remember one of the Shakirs carried me at the funeral. These events are the only memory I have about the mother. Marzani's ancestors were quite enlightened, educated people. In the Tashkichu village, his father Bahaudin had his own madrasa. However, being busy with household chores and looking after his younger brothers, Marzani had little time for lessons, and so he had to go to the madrasa in the middle of the night.
From the very childhood, Marzani studied with diligence. He tried to understand the studied as much as possible. He was not limited to studying the subjects and books that were taught in madrasas, often lingering in his home library, making considerable efforts to understand Arabic and Persian books. With special warmth, he remembers his grandfathers from both the mother and the father. His contemporaries noted that being a child, Shigabutin Marzani was inclined to think. He invented new kinds of games and entertained his fellows with his ideas. Since childhood, he independently made decisions, paid attention to everything, evaluated and criticized in his own way, worked out his own plan, and tried to act according to it. From the age of 12, he begins to compile small books on the basics of Islam, which were meant for entry-level madrasa students and ordinary Muslims. From the age of 17, Barzani has been involved in teaching at his father's madrasa. And being not satisfied with the textbook on Arabic grammar and Persian, he compiles his own textbook in order to facilitate the study for shakirs. Shigabutin Marzani was in good physical health and strength. He was very brave, and when he was still a teenager, he began to take part in national Koresh fights. On Sabantul, defeated strong and tall men, so that in Tashkichu and neighboring villages, he became famous as a brave fighter and was called Shihabi fighter. He loved to fight those who were stronger than him and never fought twice with those who he once managed to defeat. In 1838, at the age of 20, Marzani is sent with a trading caravan to study in Bukhara. Along with ordinary language, he brings a set of books. Marzani reads even during the caravan movement while on a camel. This is how he memorizes a well-known book on the Islamic doctrine, Akayid al-Nasafi, to which he later writes his own comment. After arriving in Bukhara and having rented a room, Hujra, in the madrasa of Isan Niakuli, Marzani begins to take lessons from famous Bukhara scholars. Marzani's teachers, noting his abilities and extraordinary thinking, begin to send some shakirs to learn from him. Among these scholars was Gabdul Muzmin ibn Uzbek al who shared the views of Marzani's predecessor, Abu en Nasir Kursavi, criticism of Bukhara Madrasa orders. After five years in Bukhara, Marzani goes to another nearby center of religious sciences, Samarkand, and settles in the Shirdir Madrasa. Here, his main teacher is Abu Sagid al Samarkandi. Apparently, thanks to him and his library, Marzani begins to treat Muslim sources more objectively. Abu Sagid, being also a connoisseur of history, manages to attract Marzani to this science too. After two years in Samarkand, he returns to Bukhara. This time, Marzani stops at the World Arab Madrasa for five years, where he continues to study with the Bukhara ulema, visits libraries, gives lessons to other shakirs, and writes his own writings. Speaking about the Middle Asian period of Marzani's life, one cannot but mention the Sufi element in the development of his personality. Программаны узгартырға деген фикірға келген.
In Central Asia, Marzani was a disciple of two sheikhs of the Naqshbandi Mujariya Tariqat, Gubaidullah ibn Niyaz Kuli and Gabdul Qadir al faruqi al-Hindi, Sahib Zari. On the distribution of tariffs in the Volga region, Shihabuddin Hazrat Marzani was not just an ordinary murid, pupil of sheikhs. From Sheikh Sahib Zari, he received ijazat, that is, the right to be a murshi, a spiritual teacher, in his book. Vafiyat al-Aslaf, after mentioning that he has a connection with the Nashbandi Tariqat and permission to train the murid, Marzani leads a chain of continuity from his mentor, Gabdul Qadir al-Hindi, to Bakaure Nakshband, impression of himself and his knowledge among merchants, caravan participants, who, having arrived in Kazan, recommended him for the position of Imam for the first Mahala Mosque, now Al-Marzani Mosque. Nevertheless, the novelty of his enlightenment ideas does not find understanding among the Shakirs. The first five years in Kazan were quite successful for the Imam and teacher Marzani, as well as for his students, Shakirs. Ibrahim Yunusov, the largest Tatar industrialist and trader, the leader of the Tatar part of Kazan, the sponsor of fistfights on Lake Kaban, was also the owner of the madrasa. Ibrahim Bai was the main benefactor of Shigabutin Marzani, who devoted himself to the educational process in his madrasa. After the death of Marzani's first wife, Ibrahim Yunusov helped him in his new marriage. A house was built for Marzani near the mosque. But being the man with a sense of self-respect and independence, Shigabutin Marzani did not submit to the whims and quirks of this rich man, and believing in the superiority of knowledge and intelligence over wealth, he suppressed his interference in educational matters. Because of envy to Marzani, some representatives of the Kazan clergy, showing him a heretic, tried to discord his relations with Ibrahim Bai. Because of the worsening relationship, Marzani was twice deprived of the post of Imam and Muraris, and then he was twice reinstated. Çünkü Türkiye'de de, Pakistan'da bulsun, şitillerde bulsun, şundaki kitaplar zor klaslarda, zor sınıflarda gene okutula. Yani bizim gadi hazretlerimiz, yani medreseden şıkkan hazretlerimiz zor dereceli hazretler bulanlar. In 1871, his madrasa became independent. In 1881, the Shakirs were transferred to a new stone building of the Madrasa Igalia, which has survived to the present day. Well known theologians, such as Murad Ramzi, Kashaf Tarzimani, Gabdurakman Gulmari, a public figure and journalist Gabdullah Apanev, an outstanding Tatar public figure, teacher and historian Kusain Faiskanov, and many others studying in the Shigabutin Hazrat Madrasa. <laughs> In accordance with the order of the Spiritual Assembly of September 17, 1859, Shigabutin Marzani looked through all the Quran published in Kazan and tried to prevent the publication of the Mushafs containing mistakes. In 1867, he received the position of Akun and Mutasib from the Muslim Spiritual Assembly in Ufa, despite the life difficulties, partly being in opposition to the Tatar elite. Suffering various attacks and accusations from it, Marzani continued to teach Islamic sciences with all diligence and at the same time write his theological and historical works. He wrote more than 30 works, 
most of which were written in Arabic. About half of the works relate to theological topics, the rest to history, literature and linguistics. Marzani managed to develop an effective methodology for the development of religious thought, not going beyond the established canons of Islam, Sharia and theological and legal traditions of the Tatars themselves. Nesefi Rokidese, Borl Hanefiler Hamaturi Dilarshin, Tradition Taglimat Bulup Sonola. Comparing the earlier sources with the later, Shihabutin Marzani comes to the conclusion that Muslims have moved away from the views expressed in Quran and the Sunnah of the Venerable Prophet Muhammad. He revises grades of Islamic theologians. <laughs> Қысқа жайғы түннерді есту намазын оқырға керекліген дәлілер үшін Шихабыттың Қазірет Мәржәне бік көп шиғанақларыны қолланған. Ол түрлі яқтан өзінің фикірін дәлілерге тұрыша. Шыңа көрі Мәржәне фиқ методологиясы Қанафи мәсхәбінің тарихы білән бәйлі көп кіна теоретик мәсәләләріні қорап шыққан. Historians call Shihabutin Marzani the Tatar Herodotus, since he is the founder of the Tatar historical science. The works written by Marzani in the 1980s testify to a peculiar synthesis of Eastern traditions and European knowledge of the New Age in his work. Marzani shows propensity for the history of science and interest in the essence of scientific knowledge, its development, features of its empirical and theoretical levels. During this period, he works on the handwritten bibliographical encyclopedia Wafiat al-Aslaf, Vatahiyat al-Alaf, detailed on predecessors and greetings to descendants, which includes 6,057 biographies of scientists, writers, philosophers, and political figures of the Muslim East. This work has rich material on the history of the philosophy of the East. It gives a lot of information about the life of the philosophers. To Wafiat al-Aslaf, Marzani wrote an introduction calling it Mukadima by analogy with Ibn Khaldun's work. In Mukadima and Wafiat al-Aslaf, Mardani traces the successive link from the knowledge of the ancient world and the Middle Ages to the knowledge of the new time. During this period, other works of Marzani are also published, including Haq al-Marifa wa Husn al-Idraq, the Truth of Knowledge and the Beauty of Comprehending It, 1880, an essay on Islamic law in which the scholar presents his socio-political views, Mustafa al-Akbar fi Akval Kazan va Bulgar, a storehouse of information about Kazan and Bulgar city affairs, 1885, volume 1, historical work on the Volga Bulgaria and Kazan Kanate, in the 70s, Shigabutin Marzani established close contacts with official secular authorities. In 1869, the Kazan governor asked him to write a brochure in the Tatar language on the protection of animals and a merciful attitude towards them. The brochure was printed on government money and distributed to the Tatars. Marzani also compiles reports on the birth, marriage and death of Muslims for state institutions, participates in court hearings when Muslims swear oaths. Shigabutin Hazrat communicated with some Eastern scholars of Kazan, was acquainted with Alexander Kazimovich, Kazembek, was friends with Vasily Radlov, Yosef Gottwald, he was a member of the Society of Archaeology, History, Ethnography at the Imperial Kazan University. Through his pupil Kusein Faiskanov, he establishes cooperation with Vladimir Velyaminov Zernov and Sheikh Al Tantawi, which were famous Peterburg Orientalists. Marzani was the first of Muslim scholars to participate in the preparation and holding of the Fourth All Russian Congress of the St. Petersburg Society of Archaeology, held in Kazan in 1877. His figure in a turban and green chapan often attracted the attention of Russian scientists at meetings of the Society of Archaeology. Kazan Tatar Uqtushilar Mektebi Aşılını Başlab Jibarushilarının Birsi Bula. Anın Ütenişi Buyunşa. Bu Mektebde Şehabitin... Also, at the request of Radlov, in the Kazan Tatar Teacher School, Marzani taught the basics of religion and Islamic law. He worked in this school for nine years and was a member of the Pedagogical Council. Kızlarının Xatireleri Buyunşa, Mercani Olarının Xalin Bilgen Vaqtta Kızıqlı Rivayetler Silap Olarının Kumullerin Kütere. Шулай уқ ұл балаларының дини білімлеріне зор иқтибар көрсетті. 
Duğanlıq münəsəbətlərin qədirliyi. In 1880, Shigabutin Marzani performed the Hajj with his younger brother, Sadratin Hazrat, on the way he visited Odessa, Istanbul, Alexandria, Cairo. While in Istanbul, he visited the mosque of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari and his grave visited the places where things belonging to the Prophet Muhammad were kept. There he was able to communicate with the Mufti of the time, Ahmad Asad, and other famous theologians and politicians. In Cairo, he also visited famous mosques and mazars, where he read prayers. In Medina, he visited the Prophet's mosque, the graves of Sahabs, and other historical sites. Also in Medina, he met Sheikh Mazkar, who became his third mentor in the field of Tasavvuf. توحيد المحراب ديجان توحيد المحراب محراب لارنا برلشترو ديجان مجلس وزدا مغلوم بلغانش بوجي لشقة قدر مكة دا دور تر لا جماعات باريا يعني مثلا خنافي مسخب بونش إمام شغا خنافي طلار غنا أن أرتندا نماز قيلار أنا سو خنبالي شغا ملكي شغا شافي شو لاي راكي دا بوجي لشتان سون مرجاني خدرات بس بوجي لشتا قط نشا وز فكرن سيلي بوجي لشتان سون بوجنجا قدر بردن بر إمام أرقاصندا نماز قلا باشليلر نماز قيلر خزر ده كم خج ده بولد بارز ده شهيد بولد سند بردن بر إمام باسا بارز ده مسخب كا قراميشة بر إمام أرتنا نماز قيبس يعني بيك تاريخي واقع بولد Nowadays, Marzani's books are read in many Islamic universities, including Al-Azhar. توی مغناطیس بولا، آلار بارسه دان، آلار آلار آنلیلر، بتن سانلیلر، تا گن ده، اینکن شدن، بلکی بزن کتاب لار بس، باشکا خالق لارگا ده فایده کتر. خزر ده بس شهید بودیم، مثلاً لواي خلیلی، یاردانیه ده، بزن کتاب لار بس غطا یانب، زور اثر لر ازرلی، ده الله آن نان راضی بولسن، مرجانی خزر ده بزن دغاس قبول بوده. In the last three years of his life, especially after his 20-year-old son of Mahmud, who had given high hopes, died in 1885, Marzani's health greatly weakened. Anticipating the approach of death, he devoted even more time to reading Quran. ولو أن قرآنا سيرت به الجبال أو قطعت به الأرض أو كلم به الموتى if there was such a book, thanks to which the mountains would move, the earth would split, or the dead would speak, then this book would be only the Quran, but any decision remains only with Allah. <laughs> مغرب تا مروک کد مرجانی خزرات بزدن یعنی مرجانی خزرات بزن شکرت لرنن اجازت اولان غلیم نربار الله شکر بس شما سینا بس شما مرجانی خزرات بس و بار تیک تاتار خالقانن غلیم توگل و بو دنیانن غلیم On the evening of April 18th, 1889. The heart of an outstanding Tatar scientist stopped. His son, Burkanuddin Muhammad, performed a burial prayer with a large group of people, and Marzani was buried in a cemetery in the Novo Tatar settlement. Who gave freedom to thought in religion? Who gave people happiness, the joy of the world, so that we could overcome slavery in our thoughts? Hazrat entrusted his legacy to us.
In one Rashta nation, all our people, in reverence, celebrates his birth. He may have died, but till the last judgment, his affairs will continue, his name will not die. Tukay.